power of 3 i don't like this problem but uh, since it's there i didn't want people to get confused so i'm just putting it there it's basically the same problem but uh, uh, now we are talking about powers of 3 and uh, the confusing thing here is that we can see with 2 and 4 how to use bitwise now suddenly we have 3 So if we are given twenty seven, twenty seven is three cubed, so the answer should be true. If we are given n is zero, there is no power of three that is equal zero, so the output should be false. Likewise for negative numbers, also even though they are allowing n to be negative, there is no way a negative number can be equal to three to the power some integer. N is nine, nine is three squared, so the output is true. Forty five is not a power of three, so the output is false. so yeah just take 30 seconds or a minute but uh, i'm sure you're not going to like the solution for this but uh, i'll just let's just try it so uh, based on the previous two problems it would be very tempting to go in the direction of thinking uh, about you know what sort of bit representation would a power of 3 have but that is a fruitless task because we are talking about a base 2 system and in a base 2 system there is no need i mean apart from saying that it's going to be an odd number uh, and maybe the sum of the digits in decimal would be divisible by uh, you know some some power of 3 i'm not sure there's anything else that can be done in a binary you know binary system so the solution to this is actually quite dissatisfying as i said but i'll just mention it uh due to the fact that we are only talking about 32 bit strings we know that the largest uh, value that n can have is 2 to the power 31 minus 1 largest positive value that n can have positive value of n right so clearly if n is less than or equal to 0 You can straight away return a false, just like the earlier problems. So, assuming that n is positive and it's in this range from one to two to the power thirty-one minus one, how do we detect that it's a power of three? Well, what you do is find out which is the highest power of three. that can be represented in this range suppose i knew what the highest power of 3 was that fits into 32 bits so uh that obviously is not something we can mentally do so it would need some kind of computation to compute uh, you just try different values of powers of 3 but it turns out that 3 to the power 19 is the highest power of 3 that can be represented in this range so think about suppose you're given that information how would you tell that the number that you are given is a power of 3 or not so 3 to the power 19 is going to divide any power of 3 because it is the highest power of 3 that can be represented and so all you have to do is to check 
if 3 to the power 19 exactly uh, divides your number. So basically you return, assuming that you have 3 to the power 19 calculated, if you take the mod of that with your number, whether the remainder is 0. That tells you whether n is a power of 3 or not. In systems that are, uh, the, the, you know, like Py, uh, the, in Python, you can actually compute can go beyond 32 bits. So you could really pick any power of 3 that's beyond, even if it's beyond 32 bits, it would be fine. But I guess in the lead code representation, you have to, uh, in a strict scenario, you would not be allowed to pick values that are not representable in 32 bits. So in that case, you would have to do the work to figure out which is the, which is the highest power of 3. So, Again, constant time, no auxiliary space, but I think a, not a very good problem. Now you could actually ask, could I have done uh, something like this even in earlier problems? Uh, it turns out, yes, you could have computed at least for powers of two, you could have done that. You could have computed which is the highest power of 2 that can be represented and that is relatively easy to compute because you know that 2 to the power 31 minus 1 is the highest value that can be represented positive value so clearly 2 to the power 30 is the highest power of 2 that can be stored so if you want to find out whether the given number is a power of 2 you could take 2 to the power 30 and uh, compute the remainder when you divide it with your number and check if the answer is zero. So that also works. But it doesn't work for four. It doesn't work for four for, you know, if you try this, compute the highest power of four, the highest power of 4 that can be represented is obviously the square root. Sorry, uh, I should have put this as 30, but it doesn't matter in Python, you will have to put 31. Uh, yeah, if you take the square root of this, well, or I should say 2 to the power 30 is basically 2 to the power 2 times 15, so that's 4 to the power 15. So this is also the highest power of 4 that can be represented. 4 to the power 15 is the highest power of 4. So if you try that for 4 to the power 15, that doesn't work because there can be powers of 2 that are not powers of 4, which will also leave a remainder of 0 when you divide 4 to the power 15 by, by your number. And so that's why it's not a good question, I think, because you have to assume that, um, you know, the number that you're given is prime. Powers of seven, for powers of seven, this would have worked. Maybe for powers of 11 also, but not for powers of nine or eight. So it's a very specific hack. Uh, which is which is not very appealing. Okay, Venkatesh. Yeah, hi, Onkar. If you don't know some of these tricks, worst case, can we go ahead with while n is greater than zero and n module the whatever the number which we are in this case is three equal to equal to zero then n equal to n slash three then that uh, complexity will be order of n to the base whatever the power which we are seeking. It will be log n then, right? Yeah, log n means. Yeah. I know for 2 and 4, they are very harmonious to the bits kind of a solution. But hmm. for, for in order to find power of 3 and power of 
some odd numbers no so odd number means not like even or odd some yeah uh, yeah this thing can we go go ahead with that lot yeah, of that it could be like a brute force but yes. as you see here okay. they have they have you know you're they have asked this as a follow up can you do it without loops or recursion Oh okay 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 got it got it okay then uh, the only ways to know this <laughs> uh, okay yeah but i i don't think this is a good problem to ask in an interview even if you wanted to test bit bit manipulation because this is okay. it doesn't even work for uh, uh like other numbers it's not a general technique okay, okay. uh so mar I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I should lower my hand. Sorry. Are you full? Uh, just wanted to ask a general question. Um, do you think these these type of questions or bitwise uh, operation questions are um, industry specific or domain specific um, interviews? Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard of that many general software engineers being asked that, but like, I think a couple of students had said last time that they come from an embedded background, so they were asked. uh yeah I, it's not a very frequently asked topic in interviews for our at least for uh, from what i have heard about uh, from from our candidates but at the same time there are always some students who get asked because they are working uh, you know at a lower level closer to the hardware than in in domains like embedded then you're more likely to be asked that Yeah, thank you. Jojan. So in the uh, in the power of uh, are you are still when it comes to C plus plus, you're still using the power standard uh, standard math library function, right? So there is no way of we can calculate three to the power of nineteen. uh just by the way you wrote I mean, probably yeah 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 i obviously i i computed it first and then i uh, so yeah. the way i computed it is i just kept going until i know that you know 2.4 billion is roughly the okay, maximum but in the back. in the in the uh, screenshot you mentioned uh, there is a query solve without loop or <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so that's that's absurd i think uh how, how can one know well you'll have to first do the work to figure out uh what is the highest power of 3 that can be represented okay so it it, it is uh, we should have some uh, some kind of a uh, built in uh, we should by hit some kind of uh, numbers right so right uh, right right yeah okay so uh so. maybe that's a pre computation okay that you could do uh, there is actually so if you go back to this problem where you have the number of one bits uh there is a follow up where they ask you if the function is called many times how would you optimize it uh, right, so if it uh, so the can you go by number of bits this is swar, i think there is something called a swar algorithm s w a r short form so they could it is actually the counting the number of a uh, bit set right Oh, okay no i am not familiar with that name yeah, so, i was uh, asked that in an uh, in an interview so uh, I, I so i went to a for loop and he said how could you do optimize it uh, then there is uh, then he, actually i googled around and then i found something called a swar s w a r swar algorithm which is actually some big manipulation where you count 5 by 5 which is 5 is every every other number is set right so then you shift it Uh, then you do f f f uh, because one one zero zero is what uh, something like that uh, yeah uh, yeah okay uh, actually well, i googled and found it so okay well what came to my mind is so if if you want to count the number of one bits if you given a single number then uh, you know uh, i mean number, number of set bits now number ah uh, yeah one bit or set bit set right uh, yeah yeah so what we did is we just said while uh, the number that we are working with has not been chewed down to zero keep knocking off the rightmost one bit yeah but if uh, that's the that's the theory to that's a loop or, or, or if the bit size is n you have a complexity of uh, on right 
well it will be proportional to the number of one bits whatever the number of one bits are in that number but if it's called many times what you can do is to uh, uh, you know sort of cache you know a bunch of partial solutions so obviously in the worst case if you had all the space you could you could uh, pre compute the number of one bits in all possible bit strings of, uh, you know from 0 to 2 to the power uh, 32 minus 1 and 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 store the value and just look at look up that value in a hash table but if not maybe you could do that with let's say all 2 to the power 16 bit strings right pre compute how many one bits are there in all possible 2 to the power 16 bit strings and then when you are given a new bit string of length 32 you just take the first half or the left half and the right half look up you know look up that cache or hash table or whatever it is take the number of one bits here number of one bits there add them and return the answer you could maybe if you want to work with a smaller hash table you could do it on you know for 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 each byte of the 32 bit string where for each maybe possible of those 256 possible 8 bit strings you pre calculate the number of ones in it and then you chop up any new string that you are given in into four chunks and then look up the hash table and then add those four values that to me seems like uh, how i would optimize it i'm not sure about that uh, algorithm you mentioned 